It's an um, increased awareness that on a variety of issues, uh, states can no longer act alone, individually. Um, those are issues linked, for example, to transnational processes, such as immigration, financial flows, but also issues linked uh, to what uh, we came to label recently as global public goods, uh, environment, natural resources, that is, goods that are shared by different states, that are shared at a regional or at a global level, and that require collective action at that level. Uh, in, with respect to those issues, uh, there is uh, a certain asymmetry that is increasingly recognized between uh, the entities that use to regulate and govern those kinds of matters, states, and the jurisdiction of those issues, the effects of those issues. That is, uh, those are issues that cannot, can only be effectively regulated and governed at uh, a global level. They require collective action forms, between the states, they require coordination forms between the states, they require to sum up mechanisms of governance at, that go beyond the states. Now this raises, as I said, on the one hand an effectiveness problem, that is how are we to regulate those issues since we recognize they can no longer be regulated individually by states, but also a normative uh, uh, problem, because uh, with respect to those issues, what we increasingly see is that the decisions taken by one state are impacted by decisions taken by another state uh, and also by the mobility of transnational actors and this creates also a democratic problem. Now it is from the recognition of the state of the affairs that uh, one sees emerging increased claims for global governance. Uh, but in turn these claims for global governance raise other kinds of questions. That is, what are the appropriate institutional arrangements for mechanisms of global governance to regulate these issues at global level? And also, at a normative level, what are the mechanisms of legitimacy and accountability that need to be set up at the global level to uh, control, uh, to legitimate these forms of global governance. The European University Institute uh, is a top academic institution but that has been mostly recognized uh, by its research on European affairs, though it has never been strictly limited to that. And to a certain extent one of the purposes of this program is to raise the profile of the European University Institute at a broader global level. But most importantly, however, what we believe is that the European University Institute is in a unique position uh, to aggregate, mobilize critical mass that exists in Europe. Uh, and it is in that uh, unique position because it's a truly genuine European institution with contacts with many top scientific and academic institutions and members in states throughout, throughout Europe. So the idea is that we can play a very important role in mobilizing those different resources that have been dispersed in Europe uh, and in helping those resources reach policy too. That is, in also constituting a bridge between research and policy making. The Academy of Global Governance is one of the dimensions of the program. Uh, it intends to provide executive training on global affairs, uh, in particular but not exclusively questions of global governance, globalization, and, and it provides that training aimed at uh, civil servants, national civil servants, European civil servants, but also civil servants from other places in the globe, even from international organizations, but also even from other states from outside Europe, uh, but also providing training to young scholars and uh, executives in, in general. It is one of the strong pillars in which we are building this program, but is not the only one. We also have a research pillar um, where we are developing a variety of research trends covering matters uh, such as economics of global governance, uh, climate change, uh, regional integration, uh, terrorism and international security, uh, human rights, a variety of subject matters uh, for which uh, we have uh, chosen a select group of uh, professors both from the EY and uh, from top uh, institutions uh, throughout the world 
that are among the leading scholars on those respective matters and they will be coordinating those research trends and developing a variety of activities in the context of those research trends. The third dimension it's one that links the program more strongly even to policy making and we have what we call the high-level policy seminars where we bring together academics working on a particular subject matter with the top policy makers on uh, those subjects, that is with the people that are actually taking the decisions on those issues. So uh, uh, the program um, is based on this dimension of, of uh, executive training, research, uh, policy, uh, but then is complemented by a variety of other activities, such as the creation of a network of global governance that aims to bring together people from policy and academia working on those issues. There are many other aspects of the program that we are developing, though, as I said, its core is the executive training, research and the link with policy.